Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Shalom, Israel. Most High Christ bless y'all. Welcome to another edition of 15 Minutes with the Captains. I'm Captain Naon. This is? Officer Nehemiah. Officer Nehemiah. Um, we're going to go ahead and jump right into the class. All right. Today's topic we're going to touch on is Mother Nature. Who? So, Mother Nature. Who is Mother Nature? What? Who gave this ideal of Mother Nature. We all know who did, okay? Which is who I oppress. And you gonna understand today who is the author of all these things that we see today and the things that were made on the earth. Alright? And who have the understanding of these things. Alright? Everybody don't have the understanding of these things. That's why Esau makes up these different gods and idols for us to worship and he puts the different elements and things of that nature that the Most High has made to put that with that deity or that deity. You understand? So let's go ahead and read that definition of Mother Nature. Because, again, this is something that we've learned. You know, Mother Nature, you know, you got to keep it. You know, the, you know, Valentine's Day, the, uh, Basically, Esau has to put himself in everything dealing with the Bible when he don't have anything dealing with the Bible. All right? Read it. This is the definition of Mother Nature. Mm -hmm. Mother Nature, sometimes known as Mother Earth mm -hmm. or the Earth Mother, mm -hmm. is a Greco-Roman personification of nature mm -hmm. that focuses on the life-giving and nurturing aspects of nature by embodying it in the form of the mother. Right. And it's another one I have. It says, uh, nature personifies as a creative and controlling force. So, it's, 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 with all this, the definition and the understanding of it, it comes together as if this is some type of force or power that has control over things. This idol, this, you know, idol, which we're for to read, two idols that are made up of this name, Mother Nature, from the Greeks to the Roman, and all these different um, captivities we were in, they have a form of Mother Nature. All right, let's read the Greek one and the Roman. Greek myth. Mm -hmm. In Greek mythology, Persephone, daughter of Demeter, goddess of the harvest, mm -hmm. was abducted by Hades, god of the dead, mm -hmm. and taken to the underworld as his queen. Right, so this is a whole bunch of foolishness that right. it's talking about already. All right, she was taken, held, captured, uh, in hell, I guess, with Hades. Correct. Come on. All right, that ain't nowhere in the Bible. Okay, uh, read the Roman one. Because all it does is change from one one uh, captivity, which is the Greek captivity, their God that they worship, which is going into woman worship. You know what I'm saying? The woman, the woman is God. You hear that a lot in Egyptology. All right, but read the Roman. Ancient Rome. Mm -hmm. Roman Epicurean poet Lacretus opens his dyadic poem, De Rerum Natura, by addressing Venus mm -hmm. as a veritable mother of nature. Right, Venus. So Venus is that mother of nature that represents Rome. You see all these different uh, nationalities for the Romans or Greeks, all Esau, 
but through these all different captivities, they represent, they just change the, the name, basically. They just change the name. So it's all going into women worship and understanding that now the most high is for to show you through the scriptures that the woman is not God and these different deities that we worship, we fell into a trap in worshiping these. All right. So let's go to Isaiah 28 and 9. All right. Because through reading and understanding the Bible, you understand the Bible through what we're about to read. All right. Meaning the precepts, meaning that's how we get understanding. You just can't read the Bible like a novel and think you go get some understanding. Or that if you have the other nation, that you go open the Bible and have some type of understanding. All right? Let's read that for me. This is the book of Isaiah, <coughs> chapter 28 and verse 9. Uh -huh. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Mm -hmm. And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. So it said, whom? Whom shall he teach knowledge? He taught Israel the knowledge. He gave Israel the understanding. By us practicing and applying what he gave us, which is the commandments, he, that enabled us to unlock the understanding to understand this whole earth, to understand uh, what it, uh, pharmacy or like uh, what's herbs right. and things of that nature, what heals you, all right? All these different things we know because the Most High gave us that knowledge, all right? And it said, wing from the milk, drawn from the breast. Meaning, it's a process in which you grow. All right? Our people don't understand the Bible, so they can't grow from that. The other nations don't understand the Bible, so they won't grow from that. Okay? Because it's not given to them to understand. All right? Keep going. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. For precept must be upon precept. Mm -hmm. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. So, I mean, that, that encompasses the whole Bible. The whole Bible comes together, new and old, old and new, all right? The old was here before the new. That's how, that's what they learned from. That's what Christ, Paul, Peter, the apostles, that's what they learned from, the Old Testament, the laws that were given by Moses, understand? So, understanding from the beginning, which we for the read that, go to Genesis 1 and 1. From the beginning, the Most High gave the understanding, precept upon precept, line upon line, to his children, to the children of Israel, all right? Because they have, you have a lot of doctrines today that go into what, flat earth. Like, who they came from? The oppressor, okay? He, he conjured that up in his mind because he don't understand things because the knowledge was not given to him to understand that's the mindset he had was flat earth. But the Bible going to, which we're going to read, the circle. Right, let's go read that. The book of Genesis, chapter 1 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. It said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God created. So that's showing you that he is the creator. He created everything that you see, the trees, the birds, everything, the animals, he created them, all right? And it says, uh, the heavens and the earth. And remember, the word Genesis means what? Beginning. So this is the beginning of everything that we know of life, of everything that this, this whole earth, the beginning of, all right? So from there, let's go to uh, 2 Ezra 6 and 38. Because understanding in the beginning, you had the first day, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh day he rested. The Most High God created all these beautiful things that you see today. The nature, all right? There's no mother nature. God is the one that created everything we see, the nature, the, the creator of man and woman, the creator of all the animals, everything you see, this land mass, the, the sea, okay? The air you breathe, all right? Let's go. The book of Second Ezra, mm -hmm. chapter 6 and verse 38. Mm -hmm. And I said... O Lord, thou spakest from the beginning of the creation, mm -hmm. even the first day, and saidest thus, Let heaven and earth be made, and thy word was a perfect work. Okay, read one more again. And I said, O Lord, thou spakest from the beginning of the creation. So in the beginning of the creation, we just read that in Genesis 1 and 1. All right, the most I spoke it, and it was done. All right, go ahead. 
even the first day. Even the first day. So it's going to the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh day. All right. What in that scripture do you see it mention any other entity? No, it didn't mention Mother Earth, and it didn't mention Earth Mother, and it didn't, didn't mention uh, Demeter, uh, Venus. None of these idols. None of these fake gods. All right. Keep reading. And said is thus: mm -hmm. Let heaven and earth be made. Mm -hmm. And thy word was a perfect work. And thy word was a perfect work. The most I said it, it was done, and it was perfect. Nothing that man can think of or why this was done or why that was done. The most I made it in its perfection. But, of course, the people that rule this earth today, they did what destroyed the most high's creation. They polluting the air. The sea is polluted. So a Galveston is, is, a, is a, a gravy bowl. Okay, with all the pollutants of the oil spill, so on and so forth, they're killing the sea life. All these things is showing you that it's the mother nature that they speaking of. It don't exist. Okay, uh, so from there, let's go to the uh, wisdom of Solomon, thirteen and one. Wisdom of Solomon, thirteen and one. Everything we showing you is that the Most High made all these things, not man. All right, and these different gods are deities that. Our oppressor has set up in their image to represent them, all right, as being God. Go ahead. Was the Solomon chapter 13, verse 1. Uh huh. Surely vain are all men by nature. It says, surely vain, meaning not to go profit you anything, meaning hopeless, meaning fake. It's a lot of meanings for it, all right, but it said in vain, okay, meaning it's worthless, all right. That's our thought. That's men. Okay, go ahead. Who are ignorant of God. Ignorant of God. Our people are ignorant of God today because we believe in all these fake lies. We right. believe in all these deities that our press has set up. Christmas. Um, you know, Santa Claus. Right. Okay, we believe in all these things. Go ahead. And could not out of the good things that are seen know him that is. Mm -hmm. Neither by considering the works did they acknowledge the work master? You see that it said neither by considering the works. We just word that read that his works were perfect. And we see all these things, but we don't consider who created all these things. Did Mother Nature create all these things? Venus or uh, Demeter and all this? They didn't. The most high God did. Okay? He's the creator of that perfect work. Go ahead. Verse two. Mm -hmm. But deemed either fire. Or wind, or the swift air, mm -hmm. or the circle of the stars. I told you, the Most High gives you to understand the circle of the stars, the mm -hmm. planets. That's what it's talking about. All right? He deemed these things. He created these things. Did these deities do that? No. Because they don't exist. They're not real. It's mythology. Okay? Look that word up for me. Mythology. Because in, in understanding what is a myth... It has to have some substance behind it, all right? Meaning actuality, facts, proof, all right? It doesn't. It don't have any actual proof, all right? So it says, but deem either fire or, or wind or the swift air or the circle of the stars or the violet water or the light of heaven to be the gods which govern the world. Go ahead. Got it? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Definition of mythology mm -hmm. A collection of myths Especially one belonging to a particular religious mm -hmm. or, cultural tra or cultural tradition mm -hmm. That's it? Yes, sir. So read it one more again A collection of myths A collection of myths So you got Greek mythology You got Roman mythology Meaning myths Things that are not Don't have any substance behind it It's, it's no proof that it ever existed Basically Okay go ahead Especially one belonging to a particular religious or cultural tradition. Religious or cultural traditions. So you go into Islam, they talk about the cobblestone, right. that it fell from heaven. And that it, you touch it, that's why it's black, because it took your sins away or some foolishness. Right. Like all mythology, all right, while you go into the, the religion of what? Christmas, not Christmas, but Christianity. Not the true Christians of the Bible, but Christianity. 
All right, you have Sija Borgia. You have all these different mythologies that are not real. You understand? All right, so go back. Was it Solomon chapter 13, verse 2? Mm -hmm. But deemed either fire or wind, or the swift air, mm -hmm. or the circle of the stars, mm -hmm. or the violent water, or the lights of heaven, to be the gods which govern the world. Mm -hmm. These things govern the world. Everything has a, a job. The moon has a job. The sun has a job. The waters have a job to flow in a cycle and return back into the ocean. All right? Everything has a job. In the creation of the Most High, man, we have a job as well. All right, keep going. Verse 3. With whose beauty, if they being delighted, mm -hmm. took them to be gods. Mm -hmm. Let them know how much better the Lord of them is. So the Most High is better than all his creation. That's what it's telling you. Go ahead. For the first author of beauty have created them. Right, because you go into Deuteronomy, what's that, 4 and 10 or 13, somewhere up now. He gave the, those things for the other nations to worship. Right. All right. They look to these things as God. But we know the one and true living God that made these things, these creations. All right. That's why we won't get wrapped up in this stuff. All right. Let's go to uh, Genesis 6 and 5. Genesis 6 and 5. Through the process of time, man, we've continued, because we're going back to the beginning, we've continued to do what? Go and lead on our own imaginations. To create these fake deities and these fake gods to worship. Not the true God, but deities. Go ahead. The book of Genesis, chapter 6 and verse 5. Uh -huh. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Mm -hmm. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. You see that? It said, God saw that the wicked wickedness of man was great in the earth. So... As we understand it, we go to the Greco, the Greeks, you know, uh, Alexander the Greek, uh, great. It said evil will multiply upon the earth. All right, showing you that continue all the way to today, bring it to today, to America. All right, last kingdom on, on the earth, the uh, youngest but greatest. All the wickedness, all the abominations that this melting pot that we live in has pushed, that our people believe in. You understand? It said, uh, and, that the, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. All right? So when they start making these things up a long time ago, they just remixed it and brought it to today. Okay? So from there, let's go to Exodus 20 and verse 3. Because the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that God told you certain things in his laws that govern you as a nation, that separates you from all these other nations, all right? That's why you're a special people, okay? But you have to see and know that you are because you listen to the classes that we teach, we're showing you that you're a special people and showing you that you're separate from everybody else and showing you that you're better than them. All these lies you've been taught of all these pagan days and pagan idols that you worship are false, all right? Read that. The book of Exodus, chapter 20 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So that's one key thing. The most I said in this law, thou shalt have no other gods before me. But through every, you got, I think one, some of the brothers said Earth Day. You got all these different things that Esau, they got a day for everything. Right. You know what I'm saying? They got Grandparents Day. Right. You know, they got um, Father's Day, Mother's Day. They got any day you can think of, they got it. Okay. <laughs> But that's here in Babylon, all right? Keep reading. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image mm -hmm. or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above mm -hmm. or that is in the earth beneath mm -hmm. or that is in the water under the earth. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them mm -hmm. nor serve them. Mm -hmm. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. That's it. Most our God told you do not Go about of your own imaginations and make you gods, which we did that when we came out of Egypt. Why? Because we learned that in Egypt. You understand? So we're showing you the mindsets that you have to come out of and repent from is Babylon mindset. All right? Worshiping and serving these other gods that are not gods. And the Most High is jealous over that. The Most High sent us through the captivities, just the last one, because of that. All right? From there, go to... Uh, 
Joel 2 and 27. Joel chapter 2 verse 27. The God we serve is the only God that's alive. The only living God. All right. Joel 2, 27. The book of Joel chapter 2 and verse 27. Mm -hmm. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel mm -hmm. and that I am the Lord your God and none else. He said he's in the midst of Israel and he's our God and none else. All right. So we as Israel understand that what? God it governs us. He don't govern the other nations. I Meaning he don't represent them. Okay. From there, let's go to Mark. Uh, Mark 12 and 27. Because I said this, I just want to pull the precept to show you that our God, the God of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Israelites, he's alive, he's living, because he's the creator. All right? Go ahead. The book of Mark, chapter 12 and verse 27. Mm -hmm. He is not the God of the dead, mm -hmm. but the God of the living. Mm -hmm. Ye therefore do greatly err. Right. He said he's the God of the living, not the dead. All right? Not the God of the dead, not, uh, you know, Egyptology foolishness. But it goes into all these religions and these mythologies that also brought out because it, it mixed with religion, the Greek mythology. This uh, Demeter and Venus and Mother Earth, Mother Nature, all these different things are Greek mythology. All these things are dead. They're not real. They don't exist. You see? We have the God of the living. All right? In us, we live... He lived through us, rather. All right? Christ lives through us. All right? By us, what? Keeping the commandments. Being an example. All right? So from there, let's go to um, Isaiah 43 and verse 10. Isaiah 43 and verse 10. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 43 and verse 10. Mm -hmm. Ye are my witnesses. Saith the Lord, mm -hmm. and my servant, whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. He said that what? That what? And understand that I am he. He said, and understand that I am he. I am he. He is not a she. Okay? Right. So understand it. Again, the woman worship and the woman is God and all these goddesses that our people worship unbeknownst to them because Beyonce, she will be a goddess today that our people worship, all right? So keep going, keep reading. Before me, mm -hmm. there was no God formed. Mm. Neither shall there be after me. You see that? It said before me, so before God, there was no other God. Right. Before God, there was no earth. There was no sea. There was no trees. It was, we wasn't here. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So understand, there's only one God, and before him there was no gods. Okay? Keep reading. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. I, even I, am the Lord, mm -hmm. and beside me there is no Savior. Besides the Most High God, his Son, there's no Savior. All right? No one can save us out of the condition we're in today. These gods, there be no gods, what have they done for us? Have they saved us from the poverty we're living in? Did they save us from being over here 400 years of slavery, over 400 years of slavery, in captivity? No. Have they stopped our brothers and sisters getting shot down in the street, filling the prison houses? No. Dying from all these diseases that Esau created? No. Okay. So from there, let's go to um, Jeremiah 3 and 8. It's something we did because we serve these gods. And the Most High God, as we read in Exodus 20, he's a jealous God. He told you don't deal with no other gods. Don't make you images of this, that, and the third. But we did it anyway, all right? And it's mainly the other nation. That's who we follow after because we envy them. But understand that we, we don't understand that we have the true and living God, the only God. Let's read that. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 8. Uh -huh. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel mm -hmm. commi committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Most I said backsliding Israel. Because we're spouse. We're married to the Most High. 
Here are the scriptures, right? It said we backslide, meaning we went backwards, meaning we separated from our God, basically, all right, as a woman would do with her husband, all right, and committed adultery, all right? And in the midst of committing adultery, that woman is put away, just as we were put away. Go ahead. Yet her treacherous sister Judah mm -hmm. feared not, mm -hmm. but went and played the harlot also. They say Judah went and played the harlot also. We as a nation, we've always been following these other nations and envying them, wanting to be like them when we the salt of the earth, when everything flows and comes through us. All right? So keep that in mind. Go to uh, Wisdom of Solomon 14 and 8. 14 and 8. Yeah. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14 and verse 8. Mm-hmm. But that which is made with hands is cursed, as well it, as he that made it. Mm -hmm. He, because he made it, and it, because being corruptible, it was called God. You see that? It said, the things that the man, that man as a whole, have made with their hands and with their minds as well, to be gods are no gods. Right. And them that made it or believe in those things are cursed. You're damned to eternal hellfire because you're believing in a false image. You're believing in false deities, idols. Idols got us in a situation we're in today, which is called captivity. Okay, keep going. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. For the ungodly and his ungodliness mm -hmm. are both alike hateful unto God. You see that? You hate God. Because you make these idols and make these deities of things that are not real, to trust in them. You hate God through your actions. Okay, most I say through your actions, he weighed your mind, all right? Uh, and it said we, up what well, was in uh, Jeremiah 3 and 8, it said we committed adultery. We played the harlot. Keep reading. Let's go prove it more. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. For that which is made shall be punished together with him that made it. You see that? Those that made these things are those that believe in these things. Those that trust in these things shall be punished. Can you read? Therefore, even upon the idols of the Gentiles mm -hmm. shall there be a visitation. It said the idols of the Gentiles because that's where these, these things are manifest from. The Gentiles. Okay? We didn't come up with these things because we know who our God is. All right? From the past, now, as we reform in our mind and coming back and be thinking ourselves, as you see, brothers here, we're waking up to wake you up. Okay, keep reading. Because in the creature of God, they are become an abomination. It said, because in the creature of God, they are become an abomination. Things that the Most High hate, despise. Because you read through this whole chapter, it's going over things that he hates. All right, things that man has conjured up in their own mind, the devices of man's mind, changing of kinds, things of that nature, worshiping idols, because that's what they're going to, Tammuz, so on and so forth. Man, okay, keep reading. And stumbling blocks mm -hmm. to the souls of men, mm -hmm. and a snare to the feet of the unwise. Snares to the feet, stumbling blocks, things that make you think something's right when it's really not. So you stumble at the word of God. You get snared and trapped through man, through the philosophy of, of man. Okay? It said, uh, snare to the feet of the unwise. The unwise. If you're not coming from this Bible, you don't apply this Bible, you don't understand this Bible, you are unwise. You're simple, as the scriptures say. Through the prophets, you get the understanding. So you can know who to believe in, know who to trust in. Okay? Keep reading. Verse 12. Uh-huh. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication, mm -hmm. and the invention of them, the corruption of life. It says, so for the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. That's going back into that adultery. We committed adultery. We fornicated with all these other gods, with the other nations, okay? Spiritually, because our mind was turned from our God. That's why the Most High told us in Deuteronomy, don't marry these nations. Don't cleave to them because they're going to what? 
take you, your mind, your heart from your God. And then you're going to, as we read up earlier, you're going to hate your God. Okay? So drop that. Um, go to Psalms 96 and 5. Psalms 96 and 5. And keep touching on these idols and see what these idols are to the most high. Let's read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 96 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. This Bible is redundant. It say, for all the gods. You see that lowercase g? The lowercase g means something. Meaning they're not real gods. That capital G, that's showing you he, he, he the G. <laughs> he, right. he, the, he the both high. Right. You know what I'm saying? He over everything. All right? It says, for all the gods of the nations are idols. But the Lord made the heavens, the earth. Everything you see, he made those things. All right? So don't trust in these idols, all right? That's it, all right? And then understanding through that, they, they don't have to question all these things, the flat earth, so on and so forth, because they already have the understanding, right? right? Let's go to Wisdom of Solomon 7 and 15, all right? The Most High bestowed this wisdom upon one of our forefathers, a great and powerful man, all right? Let's read that. Book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7 and verse 15. Mm -hmm. God hath granted me to speak as I would, mm -hmm. and to conceive as is meet for the things that are given me, mm -hmm. because it is he that leadeth into wisdom and directeth the wise. It says, for he that leadeth to wisdom and direct the wise. That's what Solomon asked for, wisdom, all right, and understanding. Go ahead. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. For in his hand are both we and our words. Mm -hmm. All wisdom also, and knowledge of workmanship. And knowledge of workmanship. So now it's going into the workmanship of who? The Most High, the Creator. All right? Not these fake gods, because they ain't create nothing. Go ahead. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. For he hath given me certain knowledge of the things that are. He Name. hath given him certain knowledge of the things that are. The things that we see. Okay, go ahead. Namely, to know how the world was made. How the world was made, uh-huh. And the operation of the elements. And the operation of the elements, the solar system, all these different things. He had that understanding. Right. Our forefather. Okay, go ahead. Verse 18. He, he didn't have to guess or, or turn to some mythical uh, idol right. to trust in or to get the understanding from. He already had it because the true and living God gave him that understanding. Go ahead. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. The beginning. Ending and midst of the times, mm -hmm. the alterations of the turning of the sun mm -hmm. and the change of seasons. You see that? He know like, you go on the Mother Earth, it's said the harvest and this, that, and the third, spring this, this, that. The Most High gave all that understanding to Israel because through the moon, it governs our seasons. Through the months, through the feast day, all these different things, the Most High has order and structure set up with us as a nation already. We don't have to go and search for anything else. Everything we need is in the Bible. Okay? And Solomon had that wisdom. Go ahead. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. The circuits of years mm -hmm. and the positions of stars. You know how, where and how the stars were positioned? Esau still trying to find other galaxies and this, that, and the third. Go ahead. The natures of living creatures. The natures of living creatures. The Most High God gave that wisdom to Solomon, okay, in how the animals behave, their natural uh, habitat, so on and so forth, all right, go ahead. And the furies <laughs> of wild beasts, mm -hmm. the violence of winds, mm -hmm. and the reasonings of men, mm -hmm. the diversities of plants, mm -hmm. and the virtues of roots. You see that? So the Most High gave Solomon this wisdom on, again, like I said, with the roots and the the plants, the healing uh, products in these things, all right? And going back to the the, uh, the wild beasts, like Esau tried to tame the wild beasts. Right. They put them in cages. They they think they have, they think that, again, that they're the most high, that they have some something in them that can, they're not Adam, all right? You're not Adam. You didn't name the creatures. The, the, the creatures don't fear you, all right? They only fear you because you go, 
you, you poke and prod and beat and this, that, and the third to, to put, beat them in submission. All right? This is natural when it comes to us being put back in our natural state of rulership. These things will be back in place. All right? Keep going. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. And all such things as are either secret or manifest, mm -hmm. them I know. You see that? It said all things... Such things as either secret, because we read that in Amos, he revealed his secrets to the prophets. So he understood these things. It says, uh, or manifest, them I know. He knew these things, all right? The workings of everything, all right? So from there, let's go to uh, Jeremiah 10 and 10, all right? The book of Jeremiah, chapter 10 and verse 10. Mm -hmm. But the Lord is the true God. Mm -hmm. He is the living God and an everlasting king. At his wrath, the earth shall tremble mm -hmm. and the nation shall not be able to abide his indignation. So it's telling you right there that God is the only living God. That these nations, when, like what can they do when the Most High bring forth his tornadoes? His tsunamis. All these different things that the Mosai has power to do. They can't stop it. They can't, it's no wall, no, no trench, no levee that you can build that's going to stop the Most High. All right? So it's basically telling you that these nations better realize and understand that Mother Nature, whoever, whoever, all these idols that they, that they make up are not real. All right? And they better stop playing with the Mosai. All right? So... Israel, I pray that y'all got something from this class. Uh, continue to tune in to 15 Men with the Captains. And Lord, we will see you next time. Shalom. Most sure. high Christ bless. Most high Christ bless. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.